So today I'm going to be working on my grandma's Lexus. It has like either the tranny filters plugged or the tranny's blown up. It makes like a whining noise or something like that. So uh, it sounds like a power steering pump when it's going out and I looked online. It seems like it's an issue with these trannies. They're kind of a weak transmission. So uh, it could either be that it's in fail safe mode because the tranny filter is getting too clogged to provide enough fluid so the tranny puts itself in safe mode or it could be that the uh, actual transmission needs to be rebuilt which I'm hoping it doesn't so I have pretty much uh, before I bought a set of brakes because it needed rotors and pads off eBay this is what I have in my truck this is um, stop tech it, it comes brand and different but it is actually uh, manufactured by stop tech and then here's the tranny filter. I got it from Toyota. I uh, forgot to bring my anaerobic sealer, so I'll have to go back to my house to grab that. And then I have some tranny fluid. It takes Dex, Dex two or three, and this is, uh, it takes five quarts, or yeah, five quarts. So this will pretty much uh, almost fill it up because it's four quarts. And I have another, like half full one at the shop just in case I need some more. So I'll probably put that four quarts in there. It will get it close enough to see if it's actually going to stop uh, squealing like a, like a broken power steering pump. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, it's probably gonna be pretty straightforward. I have uh, my, my drain pan. I got a, like one of the big diesel ones. So hopefully I keep this pretty clean because you know, this is a nice garage, it's not, really meant to be working on anything and I really didn't plan on doing this here but uh, since the transmission is like in that stage of actually being like I feel like it could be hurt more if it goes like if I drive it on a trailer or if I drive it somewhere to like work on it so I'm going to just do it here it almost looks like all I need to do is unbolt the bolts for the pan uh, it doesn't look like it has, actually it might have a drain plug. That'd be really nice. So yeah, if it has a drain plug, it'll be a lot easier because it'll be a lot cleaner. You know, when like the BMW actually doesn't have a drain like plug or a fill. So it's really like kind of a pain to do the transmission fluid change on that. But this, hopefully, usually Toyotas are pretty, pretty good, just like Nissan. So we'll see how it goes. I uh, plan on working on it hopefully for a couple hours and then I plan on actually giving this a nice uh, wash and I'm gonna buff it because uh, I've been driving around and it's pretty dirty you know it might not look like it but it has like just like water spots and stuff on it uh, usually it sits in here in the garage all nice and nice and tucked away so I kind of want to have it clean again and make it look all nice and nice and glossy all right so just pulled the drain plug the fluid doesn't smell or look very bad but uh, you know the car has like 150 K on it so I'm gonna let this drain for a little bit get most of the fluid out of it and then well at least out of the pan not out of the torque converter or anything like that but and then I'll drop the pan just to reduce the mess and everything the tranny pan it had quite a bit of metal in it um, not sure if this is actually gonna be okay. We'll see. Still gonna replace a tranny filter. Maybe it'll come back, but uh, you know, the fluid didn't really smell burn or anything, but with how much metal, it, look, it looked like there's a lot of metal in the bottom of the pan. The magnets themselves really didn't have very much metal on them, which was surprising, but just the bottom of the pan, just, I don't know, it had a lot of metal in it, so. Uh, you know, this car has like almost 200k on it, so uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'm going to pull the filter and actually see how much, uh, how dirty it looks. I'm, I'm sure the bottom of the pan was pretty dirty, so the, the filter's probably pretty decently dirty. And you know, trannies do uh, wear metal off of them, so that's why there are magnets in the bottom of the pan, but it's just... You know, when there's that much metal in an automatic transmission, it's kind of, uh, usually it's bad. So I'm gonna pull the filter, look at it, clean everything up, kinda, uh, and then 
put the new filter in, put the pan back on, and then fill it up and see if the uh, wine goes away and then see if maybe possibly uh, it's still good. Uh, these are really a weak tranny in these cars, which is unfortunate because my grandma's really taking good care of this car her, its whole life. She bought it brand new and uh, you know, she just bought brand new tires for it and everything. But uh, you know, Lexus did build a weak tranny that I think it's like an A341E or something like that, uh, something like that. But you know, they're in like a lot of the Toyota line and a lot of the Lexus line for like 99 to 2004 and they are a weak transmission. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully I don't have to end up rebuilding it, but if that if that's the case, I'll have to really just order the parts like instantly because I need to have it done by the end of like the month because my grandma will be here uh, in like the next couple weeks. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully it works. And uh, even if like it works and gets her through because she'll be here for a couple months Hopefully it gets her through like the next couple months and then if then if I have to rebuild it, it won't be that big of a deal because I don't want to have as much stuff going on with like stuff coming up. So we'll see what happens. Uh, got the pan off and everything. So, you know, that's that's the biggest thing. I got lucky because I like pried on the pan and then I was like, oh, I need a bigger pry bar. And I had the pan, uh, like the drain pan underneath it. And when I walked away, it like fell into the pan. So good thing that like it didn't like get it like fall on the ground and like a bunch of fluid and everything. So that was lucky, you know, that was good. But I'm going to now pull that filter. So we'll see what happens. So yeah, the filter is off and it does look pretty grimy inside of it. So uh, I think that the filter is probably uh, plugged. I doubt it's been changed its whole life. So hundred, like, I think she has 151,000 miles on this car. A lot of miles. Uh, so a lot of miles on a filter. I don't know why car manufacturers say that it's like a lifetime transmission. I guess the lifetime is like to the end of their warranty is what they're saying. But you know, uh, I think every, she's always kept up on the maintenance. So whatever the book said, she's done. But uh, I think that auto manufacturers should, should kind of be held accountable when they say a lifetime transmission, like fluid that doesn't have to be changed. Uh, tranny, tranny fluid like every 30,000 miles like uh, like max like 50,000 miles is like a lot for transmission fluid even the new stuff it does deteriorate uh, especially it gets dirty over time uh, it's being used it's being like heated up and everything so I'm gonna put the new filter in which is right there it's nice and clean so Hopefully I'll put that bad boy in there and it will uh, put it in, put the pan back on and fill it up and hopefully it doesn't whine anymore. And it actually, it, I don't, it didn't have an issue shifting. It just was like the pump was whining. It sounded like a power steering pumped in like when you don't have enough fluid in it. So hopefully the tranny's okay. I'm gonna throw this new filter in and see. Uh, what happens and I guess you guys will see as well. So the tranny is back together. I put the pan back on, uh, the filter in, the pan back on, all the bolts and everything, uh, the plug, and I put some tranny fluid in it. So now I put like almost half a gallon of transmission fluid in. I'm gonna start it and see if the actual whining goes away. So we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, so the whining's not there anymore. I'm gonna make sure there's more fluid in it. And then uh, I'm going to uh, make sure the correct amount of fluid is in there. And then I'm gonna go take it for a drive to see if, uh, if it works, make sure it doesn't slip. Uh, go drive it around for a little bit, let the tranny actually heat up. I'll go drive it on the highway. And if I have to, I'll, I'll get it towed back. But you know, I gotta make sure it's gonna work for my grandma. So. You know, uh, I'm glad that's not whining anymore. You know, it did sound like a whining power steering pump, so that was like the first sign that it could be like a plug filter, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have to rip to Walmart to uh, go grab another gallon of tranny fluid, 
it was just a little bit over a gallon, so uh, I'm just gonna grab a whole gallon because it's always good to have that stuff around. It's good for everything. That's like Ford, like Lexus, Nissan, Mitsubishi, like all that stuff uses Dex3, Mercron V, so uh, it's like actually good to have around if you have like automatic trannies and the, the BMW takes its own like BMW stuff, but everything else takes that. So. Well, except for the Juke. The Juke, I think, takes something different because it's a CVT tranny. But yeah, just, uh, you know, I'm cruising the Beamy and, uh, you know, uh, AC and everything. But uh, having some guy uh, message me about some wed sport wheels that are, like, messed up. Maybe I'll put them on the VR4. We'll see what happens. I'll have to have them refinished first. They're, like, the perfect size. They're 18 by 9 plus 30. Exactly what I'm looking for. So, uh, and they're actually like a style that I like uh, to have on it. So we'll see what they, they say. Well, what the guy says, I don't, he wants 500. I really don't want to pay 500 for them. Uh, you know, like they, they're expensive wheels when they're new, but they're old and their ones cracked and curved and all kinds of stuff. So uh, they'll, all four of them will have to be refinished and then I'll just have them coated like a color that I want them. So. I'm not sure where I'm gonna have them coated, what color, but you know, I'll, I'll figure something out. I was thinking maybe since the car is black, I might do them like a mercury silver or uh, like a, I don't know, I don't know if I wanna do them. I was thinking about like royal purple, but it wouldn't really go with the car. Like a white or a, like a silver wood. I'm not sure exactly what color I'd, I'd do them. So we'll see what, what happens, but. Uh, yeah, just going to get that training fluid. And this thing's fun to cruise. I found the, the wheel key. The tranny works good. Uh, I, I changed the tranny fluid, changed the filter, and uh, these trannies are really weak, but I drove it around the block, ripped on it a, a few times, went through the gears, got it up to 100, uh, faster than my grandma. My grandma drives really fast, but she's probably not gonna do 100. But uh, it shifts very well. I'm gonna do the brakes, because might as well, since I'm already doing all this stuff. I need to go to O'Reilly to get some brake cleaner, and then once I get back, I'm glad I, that she had the wheel key in her car. And then I'll just do the brakes and pretty much just make a video of like, tuning up my grandma's car before she comes in like two weeks. It is uh, coming out well. The uh, rotor, I did this driver side, the new, new rotor and brake pads, they're the StopTech, uh, sometimes they come in stop tech boxes, sometimes they come in the centric box. It's all stop tech stuff. But uh, here's the old rotor. It looks like they just turned it down before and uh, put new pads on it, which isn't a problem, but usually when you do that, see these cracks that are starting? Uh, these will progress into the center of the rotor, which isn't good. And then you'll have cracks in your rotors. They'll warp, they'll do all kinds of crazy stuff. I need to replace the transmission pan gasket on here, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that the tranny was going to work. So you can see it's just dripping a little bit. Uh, later on this week, I'll order that gasket. My dad's gonna drive it for the, the remainder of the week. Well, the, the week, because tomorrow's Monday. And then uh, we'll see how the transmission does. As long as it's doing well, I'll order that gasket. I'll probably order it anyway, because I'll need it regardless. And then uh, I'll get another thing of tranny fluid, because I'll need to, refill it but that'll be a good way to actually get most of those the like the tranny fluid is going to be kind of like mixed with bad stuff that was in the torque converter but yeah i just didn't want to have to put a uh put a new pan gasket on there and then find out that i have to order another one so this that was a good precaution but you know how trans automatic trannies are sometimes you know you, you'll have a good tranny You'll, uh, the fluid will be dirty, you change the fluid, and then the transmission slips. So I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't putting, throwing parts at it that I didn't need to. Uh, tranny filter and some fluid is regard, like relatively cheap uh, considering how much automatic trannies are to rebuild. So I'm gonna finish the rest of the brakes, and right now I'm going to actually go get something to drink and lunch. It's getting kind of hot. Uh, it's actually a little bit past lunch, but you know, my, my lunch time is a little bit later than everybody else's.
I finished the Lexus, did the brakes on it, took it for a test drive, kind of batted them in. Uh, you know, when you clean all the oil off the, the rotors, it's a lot better on the pads and everything. I know some like technicians and stuff will go and like just leave all the oil and then when they come back, like the brakes are like smoking. Uh, that's why a lot of people have issues when they take their car to like a shop to get like work done. Uh, technicians really don't care. So that's why I do all my own work. That's why I've always done all my own work. So I cleaned the BMW. I'm going to give it a light buff and uh, it'll probably look like a lot better. It already looks really good after that wash. It's a really clean car and you know, always taking care of it. And uh, my grandma's car is all nice and ready to go. Uh, you know, like I said, it has that little drip. Well, it might have stopped, but that's where it was dripping before. We'll see tomorrow if there's still some uh, residual, like dripping, I'll order a pan gasket at the end of the week after my dad drives it for a little bit and then uh, see how it goes. As long as it like holds up and there's no issues, you know, uh, won't have a, to rebuild it. But hopefully that's the case because, you know, with everything coming up with the the stuff uh, that I can't really talk about. But me and Trevor are gonna be doing a lot of stuff. I won't have time to actually have VL rebuild the transmission. So, you know, uh, hopefully it it does well and there's no issues. So, and then here's the LS240. I know you guys wanna see me finish this thing and actually like drive it. CNG, uh, I know a lot of people really haven't seen all the work I've done to it. It kind of looks like a Haggard LS, but it, it really isn't. So fast, uh, 102 millimeter uh, intake, throttle body, uh, coil radiator, stop tech, big brakes, uh, the rear is stock. It has a cause two-way carbon fiber drive shaft, uh, Sylvia Aero, uh, all the way around, Aero front bumper, side skirts, and then I have the rear valances. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done but it's actually pretty close to actually running. I just need a CNG tank. I have the regulator. Uh, most of it's already wired up. I did all this custom tucked wiring. So pretty much what you see is the wiring that's gonna be in the engine bay. I removed the battery, it's in the trunk, and then all my wiring goes on each side of the fender. I might add uh, AC to it. You know, I'm on this AC craze. You know, it's, it's so nice to have AC and this is gonna be a uh, daily driver kind of car like I'm gonna drive it on the street uh, it's not gonna be a dedicated drift car so I don't have to worry about not having AC and all the other stuff so uh, I'm planning on painting it I'm I'm in between uh, the two-tone seafoam green and uh, or like a royal purple so I'm, I'm still kind of deciding on what I want to do that way but you know I have some time uh, I bought like the gallon of clear for it and I have lots of different colors of paint. All I'd have to do is buy the color uh, to, to actually paint it and then do all the body work, like obviously, but uh, it's pretty close. Jesse, I did lend him my windshield. That's why there's no windshield in it. He uh, is gonna buy me one when I need one. I told him it's gonna be a little bit, maybe a couple of months away or maybe like six months. Just depends on how things go with like the house and the, the, other, the other stuff. But uh, yeah, I have bride seats for it. Uh, Nardi wood steering wheel, uh, crack free dash. There's the, uh, the sicky headers. I had uh, welded V-band flanges on it a long time ago, you know, before I, uh, before Brian taught me about, you know, uh, letting it cool so you get that nice, crisp, like bling bling color in it. I'm gonna do some stuff with the radiator hoses. I'll probably do a swirl pot. I may get rid of that radiator, that Koyo, and make a, uh, like a Griffin. I'll send them the dimensions to do a tucked radiator. But other than that, you know, it's uh, really close. Needs brake lines, has a, a sicky oil pan. Uh, this actually, I made a tranny uh, mount so I didn't have to bash the firewall in. So I think this is the only LS in the world that doesn't have the firewall bashed in on a 240. And then I also have this uh, MGW shifter. It's the best shifter you can buy. And then electric power steering. So it's a big like project, but I just got the VR4 done. Uh, hopefully I get to drive it. I have this guy that's really interested in it. I 
kind of don't want to sell it because I haven't been able to have any fun in it. So, but it's that, that thing, like somebody like knows about it and they want to buy it. So I, I might have to let it go. I, I, may, I may not just because the fact I haven't been able to play with it or have any fun. So uh, I'm probably gonna upgrade the coilovers. I had some Megan tracks laying around, I put them on. Uh, Megan tracks aren't the greatest coilovers for this kind of setup, you know, high horsepower, like 500 plus uh, horsepower, but uh, I'll probably get some Tane uh, monofluxes in the end. And uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be coming up. So we'll, we'll see uh, some, probably some progress on this since the VR4 is done and the house is getting close to being done and a lot of the projects are coming to an end. So I'm kind of just siphoning through my projects. So just siphoning through the projects that I'm doing and this is probably the next big project that's gonna happen. Uh, either this or the 240Z and the 240Z is like, this is really close to being finished and driving. Uh, the 240Z, pretty much I need to put it on a rotisserie do a lot of body work, pretty much what we're doing with the Supra. Well, what, what Trevor's doing with the Supra, but you know, I'm helping a little bit on it. And uh, it's, it's a little bit more in depth than that because I plan on actually having, uh, because of 240Z, the uh, interior doesn't have any carpet. So the paint on the interior needs to be kind of as nice as the outside in some spots. Uh, so the interior will be painted and everything. So I'm gonna be actually getting like close to having this like, a back burner project coming up so you know if you guys watch my channel uh, or if you like 240s and stuff and you want to see uh, like a street 240 s13 come to, to come together with an ls1 like five trying to aim for like 500 horsepower but uh, hopefully uh, you guys like stay and subscribe and uh, watch the other videos so kind of watch my channel i did some stuff earlier on when i was in minnesota with it I brought it down from Minnesota to here and kind of it's been sitting here for like the last five months, five to six months. So, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a project coming up. So get ready. Uh, the BMW, uh, I'm going to buff it and then uh, it'll be nice and clean. I, this thing is already clean, but I want to have like a nice coat of, nice coat of wax on it. You know how that is.